we're going to discuss today, we're going to talk uh, from the subject, The Enforcer. The Enforcer. Now, those of us who are familiar with superheroes, uh, our superhero for the believer is the Holy Spirit. He is our enforcer. Now, if I had to have a definition for the word enforcer, it one that enforces a violent criminal employed by a crime syndicate, hitman, a player as in ice hockey known for rough play and fighting. You didn't know they have hockey players. That's all they hired them for is to go out there and start something. They're the enforcer. They go out there and fight on the ice. I've seen them slug, boy. They go at it. But that's our enforcer as, as a believer, the Holy Spirit. I remember Jesus sharing some words with his disciple. I just want to lead right into our message uh, today. Uh, Jesus uh, in Luke chapter 10, 19, he says to his disciples, uh, uh, let me let me turn over there i love the bible i love the bible uh and i know you see some scriptures on the screen but don't let them don't let them steer you away from following because this is this is good stuff right here leading into the message uh luke 10 19 jesus talking to his disciples and he said behold i give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now we all know that in our own proclivities and we cannot, we are no match for the devil. No match for the devil in our flesh alone. We're no match for a scorpion or a serpent in our flesh alone. We can drink something dead and fall dead right where we're standing without the assistance of our enforcer, the Holy Spirit. Now in Romans chapter 8 and uh, it talks in more detail Romans 8 26 it says likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities helps our weaknesses for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered I don't know about you but uh, but I go through some things in this in this life with Christ and I find myself not knowing how to pray. I find myself not knowing what to pray. I find myself not knowing what to say. Sometimes I find myself not knowing what to do. Thank God for the enforcer, the Holy Spirit, the superhero for the believer in the world, uh, Disney and, uh, and other uh, I, I can't think of his name came up with some ideas for superheroes in the natural uh, superheroes like Superman uh, Spider-Man the Hulk uh, uh, Aquaman you can you can go down the list uh, there are so many superheroes that are uh, the invisible man you know superheroes that that was in in the, the natural but they were but they were uh, fictitious they weren't real but even in them not being real, they had a weakness. All of the superheroes, you can go down the list, they all had a weakness. We have an enforcer called the Holy Spirit, the believer. Jesus go down the list in, and, and talk to his disciples. And I love how he, he prepared them for what was to come. If you would read in, in John chapter 14, 26, he, Jesus said these words to his disciples. He said, but the comforter, the paraclete, the one who works with you, the one who gives you strength, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. That's why many of us don't know nothing because we're trying to know it in and of ourselves. We're trying to teach ourselves. We try to indoctrinate ourselves. We try to read up on things and, 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 and think that makes us smart. But the Bible says that much learning makes you weary. Reading many books makes you weary. But, but, but when, you, when, you, when the Holy Ghost is your teacher, bring here bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you 
peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. <laughs> Neither let it be afraid. See, Jesus was getting ready to, to leave his disciples. He's getting ready to take flight. He was getting ready to go uh, back to be with the Father. And, 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 and in his ascension, he's saying to his disciples, he said, I got to go. But if I don't go, you, you, I can't, I can't send the comforter. It's, it's expedient. Let me go over here. Let me go over here. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Let's go over here to uh, John uh, 13, 13, John 13, Holy Ghost, I thank you. Ooh, no, 16, 13. Thank you, Holy Ghost. 16, 13, 16, 13. But let me go to seven, seven if you will, seven if you will. Uh, verse seven says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. How many of us want the truth? Uh, there was one man on TV, he said, you can't handle the truth. Some of us can't handle the truth out in and of ourselves. We can't handle the truth. I'd rather for you to tell me the truth, but sometimes when you tell me the truth, I can't handle the truth. I want to know the truth, but I can't handle the truth. Are you like that? You want to know the truth, but you can't handle the truth? I, I want you to tell me the truth. I want you to tell me the truth, but when you tell me the truth, you just broke my heart. But but the Holy Ghost, ooh, Jesus told his disciples, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come. The, the, the helper, the paraclete, the one who assists you while I'm gone will not come. But, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, the enforcer. Somebody said the enforcer. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is our hit man. <laughs> The Holy Ghost is the one who handled the enemy on our behalf. The, the Holy Ghost is the one who fight on our behalf. I know you. I know. I know. I know you've been you, you've been raised to believe that God give His angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. That's the truth. It is the truth. Uh, they minister to us. <laughs> they do. But but the Holy Ghost is the one who is our enforcer. The Holy Ghost is our superhero. The, the Holy Ghost is the one who God has placed inside of the believer to, to help us along the way. Don't you know I would have fainted unless I had the enforcer. Uh, I thank God for having the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I thank God for having one who leads me. I am not want to get ahead of myself, but I thank God I have one who, who charges me, who, who, who in, in, infuses me and strengthens me. I can't live without him. <laughs> Paul wrote to the church in the book of Acts and he said in, in that uh, 17, 17, I believe in, in 29, he says, in him we live, and in him we move. And it's in him we have our being. I don't know about you, but I can't make it without him. I, I, I can't make the right decisions without him. The same Paul wrote in Romans chapter 9, the, the, the chapter where we all get it all mixed up. But Paul said, when I would do good, evil is always present. But I come to say something to you too, but when I would do bad, evil is not present. <laughs> when I go to do bad, good is always present. Hallelujah. Thank God for the Holy Ghost because I've had some thoughts to come across my mind. I've, I've been in places when I was about to do some things and the Holy Ghost came and broke something across my mind and said, don't do it. I wish I had me somebody. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been in a place where you was about to do wrong and the Holy Ghost said, don't do it. He's a keeper. He's the one who brings us the truth. He's the one who come to lead us and to guide us. Can we read the scripture to see why the Holy Ghost came? Verse 8 says, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. He will correct the world. That's his job. And of righteousness, how to live right. And of judgment, of sin, because they believe not on me. 
hope of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. You got to have the Holy Ghost. Don't let nobody convince you that you don't need the baptism of the Holy Ghost. As a matter of fact, you can override the Holy Ghost. Just like I said to you earlier, I said to you, I said, now watch this, watch this. I said, you can't live right without having the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It's impossible to do the right thing without having the Holy Ghost. I also said to you that all the other superheroes, they had a weakness. Now you might be a prize to know what I'm about to say right now, but I come to tell you the Holy Ghost have a weakness too, and it's you. I'm the Holy Ghost weakness. When I don't do what he tells me to do, when I, when, when I don't listen to the Holy Spirit, I become his weakness. I become his kryptonite. <laughs> I, I become a problem to the Holy Ghost when he leads me in the direction and I choose to go in the direction I want to go in. That's what I mean by that son. The Holy Ghost cannot work through you unless you give in, unless you yield to him. In Luke chapter 6, Jesus talks to the disciples and he talks about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and he asked them a question. He said, why call you me Lord, Lord, and you don't do the things I tell you to do? Why call me your daddy and you won't listen to me? Why call me your mama and you won't listen to what I tell you to do? Don't call me kin to you and you want to do your thing. We have the audacity, we have uh, the, the nerve the, uh, to, 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 to say that, that Jesus is our Savior and we have the baptism of the Holy Ghost and we do what we want to do. He is the enforcer for the believer. The Holy Spirit helps to govern our behavior towards sin. <laughs> Quit God Almighty. When I get ready, you you know when you're getting ready to do the wrong thing because the Holy Ghost telling you, you are doing, you are about to do the wrong thing. He'll check you. Show you the Holy Ghost is an enforcer. This young man and I had no communications whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I forgot he was coming. And he came and sung the songs that lines up with the message. How in the world because something like that happens when you're not even in communication with the person and the Holy Spirit is saying the same thing to him that he's saying to me that because he wants his people to get a word to know that the comforter is real. I remember Andre Crouch was saying a song the comforter has come. <laughs> glory to God you need to understand that when Jesus was telling his disciples that he was going to send the comforter to them he wasn't just talking to them when he was telling his disciples that you shall receive power he wasn't just talking to them when he told them that when you can drink any deadly thing and it shall not harm you he wasn't just talking to them when he told them that you can tread on scorpions and, and you can tread on serpents he wasn't just talking to them he was talking to me and you too you find it in your bible when he said these signs john holy ghost 16 he said and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils in my name they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover in my name if they drink any deadly thing it shall not harm them in my name they shall speak with new tongues in the name of Jesus somebody say in the name of Jesus write it on your screen in the name of Jesus walk through your house and say in the name of Jesus demons will have to flee walk through your house and say in the name of Jesus sickness gotta go walk through your house and say in the name of Jesus COVID-19 cannot dwell in this house I wish I had me somebody it's time for us to take God at his word now when you get down to verse 12 he says I have yet many things to say unto you but you cannot bear them now be it when he the spirit of truth is come 
he will guide you uh, into all truth. I, I don't understand how believers uh, can have the Holy Ghost and walk in an error. Uh, when he says the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth, you can override the Holy Ghost. I want you to know that. I remember back uh, some 30 something years ago, uh, the Holy Ghost was trying to get me to do the right thing. He was trying to convince me that that ain't right. You can't do that. Don't do that. And here I am. I'm trying to justify by the word. You can't justify uh, doing wrong when God tells you in his word watch this and watch this you can't justify your wrong when God is telling you it's wrong if the Holy Ghost tell you it's wrong you can I don't care what book you find it in it's wrong you can find it in the Torah it's wrong you can find it in Jehovah's Witness you're wrong you can find it in the Bible you're wrong if God says it's wrong, only God can change what he says. I had all the right according to the word to do what I had made up my mind I was going to do. I read it in the Bible. I read it in the scriptures. I read it and the Holy Ghost said, don't do it. You can override the spirit of truth with the spirit of error. And the spirit of error is what's operating in your emotions. You remember Eve? <laughs> See, you got to understand we are emotional beings. See, our flesh operates through the soulless realm. Uh, feelings. Somebody say feelings. I, I, I want to feel good when I, when I make this decision. I want to feel right when I make this decision. And I come to tell you that Holy Ghost will convict you of sin. It costs me the day because of that decision I made. I'm still paying for that decision I made 30 odd some years ago because I overrode the decision that the Holy Ghost was telling me not to do. I'm coming to tell you today the Holy Ghost is telling you not to do something that's going to cost you for years. You're going to pay for it for years. You're going to make a decision today that's going to cost you the rest of your life. You better listen to the enforcer. You better listen to the Holy Ghost. God didn't allow us to be baptized with his spirit. He didn't allow us to be baptized with the Holy Ghost so we can do what we want to do. What's the purpose of having the Holy Ghost if you're going to guide yourself? Ow! What's the purpose of having the Holy Ghost when you're going to do it your way? What's the purpose of having the Holy Ghost if you're not going to listen to what he's telling you about the word? I know you ain't going to like me today. But I'm going to tell you what the word says. How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you he, into all truth, into all truth, into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. The Holy Ghost didn't come to talk about him. The Holy Ghost came to talk about Jesus. Oh, he come to glorify him. He come to make Jesus bright in our life. He come that the world might see Jesus in you and not you in you. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I'm tired of living. I, I, I want the Holy Ghost to live through me. I'm tired of showing up at the wrong time. I'm, I'm tired of saying the wrong thing at the wrong time. I wish I had been somebody. I'm, I'm tired of fighting my flesh and, and my flesh winning. I'm, I, I need to listen to the Holy Ghost. Y'all have the nerve. You have the uh, you have the nerve. You have the nerve to tell that person they changed. You was doing real good for the last five years, and now in this sixth year, you didn't change. No. I beg to differ with you. I didn't change. You changed. Yeah, you 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 said something to me you didn't say to me five years ago so you changed 
And when you change, you cause yourself to see something that you didn't know was inside of me. I, I, matter of fact, I didn't know it was in me until you said what you said. I, I didn't know this was in me until you did what you did. Let me tell you something. Every action brings about an equal but unequal reaction. You got to be careful how you treat people because you might see something that you be surprised you see. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. The enforcer. Thank God for the enforcer. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth is come, he would guide you in the all truth for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear whatsoever he shall hear now when, when we going to start doing what we hear? If the Holy Ghost have to hear then that means if he's going to communicate to me, I have to hear. He that have an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Are you listening? Are you listening? You will be surprised how many of us got the baptism of the Holy Ghost and, and run around speaking in tongues and running around saying we so anointed we got we got oil running all down our neck, but we will not do what the Holy Ghost is telling us to do. He shall glorify Hayabasa. That shall he speak what he hear and he will show you things to come. Some of us, he can't show us because we won't listen. He tell you to go left, you go right. He tell you to go up, you go down. How you going to see what he have to show you and you going in the wrong direction? Ha. He shall glorify me for he shall receive a mind and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Jesus talking. Therefore said I that he shall not take a mine and shall show it unto you a little while and you shall not see me again a little while and you shall see me because I go to the Father. We got to talk tonight, y'all. We, I mean today. We got to talk today. I got to have you. I got to have you, your undivided attention today because... We got, to, he, we got to yield to the enforcer. In order for him to do what he came to do, I have to yield to him. I got to give in to him. You remember when God told, told uh, Adam and Eve, he told them, I give you dominion. They had dominion over everything on the whole world. Uh, they had dominion over that little serpent, that little slimy uh, thing that was talking to her and trying to and, and, and convincing her to go against the will of God, to convince her to go against the word that God has spoken to them. And... and, 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 and and, and see when you give in to your emotions when you give in to your flesh I know we go on record to say that women are emotional beings I know we do we do we do we go on record to say that but let me tell you something man you are too you have you have a emotion you are an emotional being too because you sometimes yield to the proclivities of your soulish realm your feelings you ever told a woman, boy, I feel like knocking you out. That's your feelings. That's your flesh. That's your emotions. Hey, yeah, 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 go on there. How oh, glory to God. See, when you're yielding to the flesh, to your emotions, watch this, the soulless ram. Remember, Eve bit the fruit and gave it to him. And because of his emotions, he bit of it. And because of his emotions, he tried to hide. Because of his emotions, he tried to cover himself up. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. We yield to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those are your three things. Those are your three problems right there. Those are your three problems and my three problems. If we overcome those three, we got this thing licked. We got it licked. Let me read something and we going home. Acts 1 and 8. But you shall receive power. You shall receive the enforcer. <laughs> After that, the Holy Ghost, the enforcer, is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The enforcer. 
Ah, boy, I feel like reading some more here. I, I'm trying to behave myself, but it's just so hard to not read some more. I got to read some more. I got to read some more. Uh, Philippians, Philippians, Philippians 4 and 6. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the God, the peace, the peace, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Oh, I got to read Psalms. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Psalm 61. Psalm 61. Oh, we need this. Oh, we need this. I know you'd be saying, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Well, if you need him, then when he when he uh, when he show up, then listen to him. Yeah. Lord, I need an answer. I remember we sang the song. It's me again, Lord, with a prayer that needs an answer. It's me again, Lord, with a problem I cannot solve. All I need to worry you. <laughs> Here I am, I got something new. And then when he give you the answer, you don't listen. Why, why pray to God you won't listen to what he say? Why ask God for the answer? And when you get the answer, you don't listen. You need to read the words that's coming out of my mouth. Why ask God for something and you won't listen to what he's saying? You hear his Paul writing to them and he's saying to them, be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious for nothing. Don't go on your hearts thinking. Don't go on your emotions because you will have a heart attack. You will go into depression. You will lose your mind. That's why he's telling you, you need to go to God. You need to make your request known to God. You need to supplant you need to supplicate to God. You need to tell God what's going on and listen to the answer that God's going to give you and stop going on your own thoughts. Take no thought. Take no thought. Take no thought for tomorrow. Many of us have already got tomorrow planned out. Child, he ain't going to be in my life tomorrow. Child, she ain't going to be in my life tomorrow. Oh, matter of fact, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Wait a minute. Oh, this is the time of the year people just start looking for girlfriend and boyfriends because they want gifts. Yeah. yeah this is the time, and then the Lord telling you, no, this is the time you need to be by yourself. And you're still looking. I wish I had somebody. The Lord tell you, say, you need, to, you need to be by yourself. You need to be secluded. I need you to, I need you to spend some, some time with me. And you be so busy doing what you want to do. Lord, I'm listening to you today. I'm listening to you today you're talking to me too I hear you but your mind your, your emotions don't want to yield your emotions your feelings don't want to yield oh let's just read this and we're going home Psalm 61 hear my cry hear me Lord hear my prayer you know what we say hear my prayer Lord oh God attend unto my prayer listen to what I'm saying Lord from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed lead me to the rock that's higher than I. <laughs> Good God Almighty. Well, we want to we want to go to the rock. We want to go to the one that's above us, but when we get there, we don't want to listen. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. For thou, O God, has heard my plea. Oh, Holy Ghost. See, let me tell you something. The reason why we need the enforcer is because we are quick to yield to how we feel. Because we think how we feel is going to make us feel better than the Holy Ghost. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> Woo! Let me tell you something. The Holy Ghost and God and Jesus will tell you to do something and you won't feel good about it. Now don't think the Lord going to tell you everything he tells you, you're going to feel good about that decision. You are not going to feel good about everything the Lord will tell you to do. There's some things the Lord will tell you to do, you will feel miserable about doing it. But after a while, I said after a while, weeping men do it for a night, but joy comes in the morning. He who sows in tears shall reap in joy. I got to read a little bit further and we're going home. For thou, O God, has heard my vows. Thou has given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life, my life, his life, her life, and his years as many generations. 
He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may pres preserve me. See, look at that. Mercy and truth going to preserve you. That's why it's important that we listen to the truth, because the truth will preserve your life. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, my, no, no, no. You'll be in a better place right now if you listen to the truth. If you yield to what God is saying to you, it'll preserve you. I'm back done. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many years, many generations. He shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever that I may daily perform your vows. We got to do what God says to you. We got to yield to the enforcer, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I yield to you today. Holy Spirit, I yield to you today. Holy Spirit, you are the enforcer of my life, Holy Spirit. I yield to you. I give over to you, Holy Spirit. Sweet Holy Spirit. I yield to you, Holy Spirit. We give glory to you, Lord. We thank you today for the enforcer. Thank you for the comforter. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the paraclete. Mm. I yield myself to you today. I yield myself to you today, November the 21st, 2020. I yield myself to you right now. 355, I yield myself to you, Holy Spirit. I give over to you, Holy Spirit. I yield over to you. Why? Why be disquieted in me, O oh my soul? Put your trust in God. <laughs> Yield to God. Yield your life to God and you'll see better results. Do what God says do and you will see that change in your life that you've been looking for. Allow God to, to give you a paradigm shift. Allow God to speak to your heart. That your life would change. Give God preeminence over your life and you will see that better person that you've been looking for. You've been trying to do it yourself, said the Lord, and you'll always see bad results. You must yield to me. If you want to see what I want for your life, you must yield to me, said God. You must do it my way and not your way. You must think my thoughts and not your thoughts. Your thoughts are thoughts of evil. You think that I don't have a future for you. But I have a future for you, saith God. Yield over to me and you will see better results. Bless you today. We thank God for you being tuned in with us follow the app please 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 we need your help financially the I am church we need your financial support please 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 if it's nothing but a dollar send a dollar send something to be of support to us God bless you on Instagram YouTube Twitter and Facebook and all the other medias that we have out there, the platforms that we're streaming on. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you. If we've been a blessing to you, please, please don't hesitate to go on Cash App and be a blessing to us. Be a blessing to this ministry. 
if this ministry has been a blessing to you. Blessings to you. We love you. We love you. Glory. Praise God. It's easy to think that when we give, not much happens. That's because we tend to think of it as a single transaction. We give, they get. The end. But what if there is more to the story? What if God is doing more than we know with our gift? Good news. He is. When we give, we are doing more than we know. Because God does more than we could imagine in three key ways. God works through us. We become a pipeline through which His blessings flow. Instead of holding tightly to what He has given us, we must let it overflow into the needy world around us, allowing God's glory to shine. God works with us. We become partners in His mission to renew and restore all things to Himself. Through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, we join in the gracious work He has already begun. We become co-creators, shaping His world for good. God works in us. We become participants in His work of grace within our own hearts. Our giving helps transform us, even as we bless others. And as we align our treasure with what He treasures, we reveal the work He is doing in our hearts to make us more like Jesus. What happens when we give? More than we could ever imagine. Give generously and discover what God can do because of you.